Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord give you peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The official year of mercy comes to an end. And the physical door of mercy is now closed. However, the time of mercy continues and the spiritual door of mercy has to remain open. We are also coming to the end of the liturgical year in a few days. And it is the time when the scripture readings are speaking about destructive events. Sometimes we could be frightened. However, if we are listening carefully, we can hear the care of God for those who believe. Yes, it is true that Malachi speaks about the day burning like a furnace, cutting short all the evildoers and burning them up like the stubble on the fields. And Jesus also says about the beautiful temple, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be destroyed. We must apply this word to all wonders that human beings created in this world. Nothing will last forever. Neither the Chinese wall nor the Taj Mahal in Agra Neither Notre Dame in Paris, nor St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. Neither Burj Khalifa, nor Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi. All this one day will perish. However, neither the prophet nor Jesus are leaving us with the bad news only. Between the ruinous messages, Consoling words are forthcoming. They give us strength. Through the prophet Malachi, God promises, for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will shine out with healing in his rays. With healing in his rays. And Jesus ends his apocalyptic speech with the encouraging words, you will be hated by all men on account of my name, yes, but no hair of your head will be lost. Your endurance will win you your lives. Your endurance will win you your lives. This is the challenge for what we call the interim time the time between the first coming of the Lord and his second coming. Yes, calamities, wars, plagues, famines, persecutions, betrayals, political unrest, and so on, are happening and will continue to happen until the end of the world. Amidst this reality, we the faithful have to endure. We have to endure. The last word of the Lord will be a word of mercy for all those who truly believe in him. How have we to behave in the interim time? St. Paul teaches us today, first of all, we have to work faithfully, and not to fall into idleness and inactivity. He writes, we hear that there are some of you who are living in idleness, doing no work themselves, but interfering with everyone else's. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we order and call on people of this kind to go on quietly working and earning the food that they eat. The events around us sometimes may be shocking, 
they never should prevent us from doing our duties and to continue to do our work. Yesterday, I think I read in the newspaper that in the United States after the election, there were students and workers and professors and employees who didn't appear anymore at the work because they were shocked about the election. That is apocalyptic fear which goes against what St. Paul says. Go on quietly working whatever happens. Secondly, we have to avoid panic. Many people in such situations run to and fro looking for orientation in the wrong place and losing the sober mind. Listen to the word of Jesus. Take care not to be deceived. Many will come using my name and saying, I am he, and the time is near at hand. Refuse to join them. Refuse to join them. Even nowadays, people are listening to voices promising all kind of healing and miracles, telling that they have seen the Lord and bringing a new message. I can only say with Jesus, refuse to join them. Don't be stupid. Thirdly, keep a clear head. Amidst the calamities, there is the opportunity to bear witness, Jesus says. Or St. Paul. In critical times, the Lord will assist us he promises today in view of persecutions. Listen, keep this carefully in mind. You are not to prepare your defense because I, the Lord, myself, shall give you an eloquence and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to resist or contradict. I have seen that with people, simple people, who in the right moment knew what they had to say because the Lord himself assisted them. And finally, keep a sober faithfulness. Word of Jesus, by your perseverance, you will secure your lives. This faithfulness in our daily life and the perseverance even in moments when we have to go through trial that will win us the eternal life. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the official year of mercy is coming to an end. Now has come the time of perseverance in faith, perseverance in mercy. Read and meditate also my pastoral letter you have are given today, or you have received already on Friday, I don't know, with the title, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. We could also say, mercy is our sacrifice, the sacrifice which pleases God. Because in every Eucharistic celebration, we are taken into the mystery of the Lord's mercy when he says, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. Yes, the sacrifice of Jesus is his mercy applied to us. Let us live it in continuity beyond the year of mercy. Amen.